watching Rising this morning, and I was like, oh, child labor laws. Let me watch what Brie has to say about that because I'm sure she'll be insightful. And then, oh, my God, I should have known. Robbie comes in. And uh, shout out to you, Robbie. It, Robbie follows us on Twitter now, so shout out to you, Robbie. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still not biting my tongue, but, you know, hats off to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, Robbie starts talking some extreme nonsense, bro, like some shit that will make you want to pound your head against a concrete block. Uh, and, and it's just typical right-wing framework on all these issues that's massively exploitation or exploitative and uh, at the end result just beneficial to um, corporations and if you want it's really worth it you can watch the entire uh, Brianna Joy Grave Radar she goes into before this why it's such a horrible idea for us to allow these corporations to roll back their child labor laws and we're not talking about like oh you're 17 years old and you're mowing lawns in the summertime we're talking about you're 14 years old and you're in a meat packing factory and you're cutting out fucking organs and you don't speak any English and your parents can't fucking feed you if you don't work kind of shit right that should not be happening in this country we should have social welfare programs we should be having our kids in school we should be having those people learn so that guess what maybe their parents had to risk everything everything to come to this country and work in a fucking meat factory, but God damn it. They're going to be able to get a job with a 401k and maybe take care of their parents when those people need to retire. Okay. Um, the fact that the so-called like righteous American value people don't get behind that at all fucking maddens me. Yeah, this is crazy. And as Zach said, it's a good radar. If you guys want to check it out in its entirety, it's about nine minutes long. We're not going to play the whole thing. Um, we're just going to play the debate that ensued after she finished up. Um, but yeah, really good radar about how certain states are rolling back mm -hmm. regulations that prevent child labor in dangerous workplace situations like meatpacking plans, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, Bri Brianna is obviously condemning this as nefarious, you know, corporate capitalism, exploiting people that they don't have to pay as much. Obviously, you're not expected to pay a 14 year old as much as you're expected to pay a grown person, which is why companies are interested in hiring children to do these jobs in the first place. Um, and yeah, you would expect Robbie to totally agree and, and condemn this insidious exploitation along with his co-host. But instead, we were treated to this exchange, this little debate, um, which is truly wild. Uh, can't say I was even expecting this from Robbie, who, like you said, Zach, now follows us on Twitter. So shout out to you, Robbie. Feel free to come debate us on this specific subject. That would be quite fun. Oh, Brianna, 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 Brianna. Look, if I, I think work can be healthy for people of that age, and if they wanted, I'm not saying they should be forced into coal mines. If they want to work when they're not at school, and their parents think it would be good for them, and somebody wants to hire them, it's not my business or the government's to say no. No, is what I would say. I don't have any problem with that. That's that's a pretty extreme position, Robbie, and I don't necessarily feel like I need to argue it because I just don't think that there's, there's not many people that feel that way. I think that I don't think most teenagers people... should have a summer job. I think most people don't think people don't let their kids work anymore. Is that why they're all depressed and incapable? Yeah, I spent my summer working in the fucking meat packing plant as a 15 year old. It was a great magical summer. We'll never I'll never forget it. Um, and also, by the way, this is a uniquely American concept. Um, like if you go to Europe, for example, France um, or another European country, uh, it's almost unheard of for high schoolers to work at all in just normal jobs like that. Like it's just not a thing for people to join the workforce before they graduate college. It's just not something you really see at all. Businesses, restaurants, et cetera, they're staffed by working adults that are paid a livable wage. Companies and corporations are not able to just exploit literal children in order to you know, pay people less. Oh, a hundred percent. Right. Like, I mean, we talk about this all the time in uh, like Europe at service work world. Like you can kind of treat the customers like shit because like you don't have to work for their tip money. Right. Like everybody in America is like, God, how nice it would be to just be like a bartender in Paris where I could just like fucking knowingly like fucking deride all of the people. And they're just still going to have to pay me the same amount of money for this. Right. Uh, uh, but in America, we just relegate these kinds of jobs to either people that we could exploit massively or teenagers to make us our cup of coffee or whatever, right? And it's so that we could drive the labor costs down, 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 and we make the people survive off of a tipped wage anyway. Um, so yeah, massive exploitation uh, across the board. And also, Yavin and I are, we're not coming at this from a place of like fucking privilege or anything like that. We both had summer jobs. In fact, Gavin and I had jobs during the school year uh, a lot of times when we were growing up and it wasn't necessarily for like financial necessity, but I wanted to have extra money to do shit when I was uh, uh, going out with my friends. And uh, I don't know. I feel like just as a society, there is still a ton of pressure to get a job when uh, you're, um, you know, when you're 
a teenager and he acts like it's like oh kids these days like fucking you know they're on their phones which is i think what he says next right like oh they wouldn't be like just addicted to their screens all the time if they were out here working it's like bro uh i don't know if you know this but like a lot of people who are on their phones all the time like we all like they do have to go to work they do have uh jobs right a lot of people who are in high school are working and this is about making it so that you have to start working younger so that you can start working longer right like in the state of kansas where gavin and i grew up and worked like the child labor laws expired when you turned 16 so we're not talking about 16 year old kids we're talking about people who are younger than that potentially going and spending like five to seven hours after school uh you know doing low wage work that you know would be difficult to find an adult that would be capable and willing to do because of the you know unique uh, position that a, and vulnerable position that a child is in where they're not even able to fully make decisions for themselves exactly so let's keep watching this it does get even more crazy job i think most people don't think people don't let their kids work anymore is that why they're all depressed and incapable I think that most people believe that 14 year olds shouldn't be working on meat packing plants in the middle of the night cleaning I guillotines some... I think <laughs> that's, that's I think hard the job work we're talking good about. For, I mean, you're you're hearkening back to an earlier era and, and saying things were always better then. No, no, no. Things, then. things were worse then. Kids it was then. horrible then. <laughs> Kids were dying in factories back then, and we should not go back. If your today. issue is the fact the the employers, the factories need the need the liability fix again. Yes, again, if they harm people, if they're negligent, I do think they should pay. I've said that in all the second the discussions we've had on the railroads, um, but that, that doesn't. I mean, the, the work should be safe. For adults and for kids it like, should be kids i don't have this i don't like fetishize kids not working and just being at home on their smartphones all I don't day it doesn't kids. seem like it's better for them that's that's just a straw man robbie the law already allows kids to work it allows kids to work jobs that aren't especially dangerous that's why i read all of those caveats at the beginning jobs that are especially dangerous well no some some maybe maybe some people like Lincoln Greenwald would say the whore and maybe upton sinclair would say the intrinsic visceral horror of what it means to work in a slaughterhouse and to consume animals is something that no human should be engaged in. I'm, I'm actually, frankly, open to that argument. But that seems to be a little bit at odds with your argument that people should be able to do whatever labor they can profit off of and, and free enterprise. And I'm not going to bring the government to into, I mean, this is what I'm, this is what I'm saying in all the, I mean, you know, you bring up the, uh, the curriculum fights or the, or the gender affirming care or all that stuff we talk about. Again, I don't think it's the government's, if, if, it's what the family is fine with and the kid's fine with and some third party is fine with. I don't think it's the government's business. I don't care. I say that for all that stuff and I say that for this stuff right. too. I, I, all right, I well, I stand corrected on that. Good on you, Robbie. To basically not have any labor laws whatsoever to say that people can agree to engage in whatever contractual labor relationship and that an employer has no obligations. There should be no... I didn't uh, say the employer should have no obligations. I, you should I mean, be able to, again, sue to right harms that I have no problem with. Look, I, I respect <laughs> your position that you think that there's with, no sorry. job to... That just means that after they fuck you and exploit you, then if you have the means to sue them in court and you can afford a lawyer, uh, then whatever the court decides you're settled is whatever. It's worth. That's not going to deal with one ounce of prevention. And that's where the government comes in. And that's why regulation is so necessary, because Robbie doesn't put forward a single argument for prevention. Right. How do you prevent these problems from happening? Uh, su suing somebody is all about getting like restitution. But I'm talking about prevention. Uh, is he just willing to let, uh, you know, because if you go back in uh, the day when we did, when Brianna correctly identifies it was it was much worse and child labor was horrid in this country uh, in the late eight or late 19th and turn of the 20th century. Right. Uh, you, the, you had the kids that were weaving at the mills and doing all that kind of stuff and losing their fingers and um, all kinds of horrible stuff. I mean, chimney sweeps that are four years old. I mean, getting all kinds of problems. Uh, obviously, we don't want to go back to that, but that was because there was no prevention, right? It was just like, oh, seek restitution from the company, which is going to be a pittance compared to what you deserve. Uh, and it's more profitable for them to just grind you up like a meat grinder uh, instead of actually preventing harm to you, which is why we have to have the government step in. Dangerous for a 14 year old. The uh, Iowa. Now, who's straw manning who? That's literally the law, Robbie. That's literally the law to let 14 to 17 year olds what you do extremely allow someone, dangerous. Allowing someone to do something is not the same thing as endorsing or saying it's a good idea. I just don't think it's any business of the government's. Okay. So it has been historically the business of the government because communities have come together and said that it is wrong and exploitative for young kids to be working certain kinds of jobs. That has been the standard in the Iowa law and most laws across the country for over, you know, you know for decades and probably close to a century. We feel like as a community that we like to have certain kinds of laws that express our values. If your value is that you think it's appropriate for um, kids to work in these conditions, that's fine. But people have been outraged over this law because the broader American 
mentality is not that kids just, should be dismembering I'm not a, animals I'm not in the middle of the night. This new thinking that kids are not adults until they're like 35, and we see and we see the effects. They're miserable. We see their self-professed you think mental health will, rights. I'm sorry. Your argument is that kids. Will I mean, be, we've delayed adulthood until. Your argument is that 14 year olds will be happier if they get to work in meatpacking plants. They might learn something. They might build. I mean, this, look, this is this is a conservative way of thinking, but it has been a way of thinking. And meatpacking plants. And. And, and coal mines. I mean, if that's what's available, I'm, I don't know that that's the best thing for them to be doing. But again, it's not any of my business. I, if I had a kid that age, I could work it out with them and whatever but I thought was best. That is why the libertarian philosophy is so fucking antithetical to me, because his honest answer to all of those questions is no. And if you were like, Robbie, would you let your child do that? He'd be like, no, but I'm in a position where I can prevent my child from having to do that. And I don't give a single fuck about anyone else uh, if it comes to the, like, whatever. I'm not going to participate in any kind of collective action to protect them and their children. I don't care if a mother and father who love their child as deeply and robustly as I would love mine are forced to, for survival, send their child in harm's way for money. I don't care about that. That's none of my business. Like, how the fuck could you be so cold? I don't think he really thinks about what he's saying when he says that kind of shit. Like, oh, it's none of my business. It's just your way of saying I don't care if bad things happen to other people. Right. right. That's what I'm hearing. Exactly. And you guys know that the Hills audience is mostly right wing. So oftentimes when Brianna gets in a debate with Robbie Swab, the comment section kind of takes his side. Um, but I think it really speaks to the insanity of Robbie's argument here that the comment section is almost universally against his talking points, against his argument. I'll show you guys an example of that. Here's one of the top comments saying another episode of Robbie doesn't understand life again. He sounds like a corporate loving boomer and everyone needs to work nonstop and easily in life. Um, so, I mean, that's a very legitimate and valid reaction to what we just heard. This guy says we'll really do anything but raise wages, um, which, again, is totally fair. Um, this is the future for your kids, folks. My boy will be leaving for kinder, gentler pastures in a more welcoming country. Thank you so much for this. So wait, they're mature enough to elect for gender swapping surgery, but not old enough to work in a factory. We need laws to protect children and the vulnerable. 100 percent. Brianna, you were the picture of patient objectivity. I'd be going upside I'd probably be going upside the overprivileged boy's head in real time. He's obviously never done the sort of work under discussion, which I think is very fair to point out. God bless Brianna's patience, um, et cetera, et cetera. People over and over again calling out Robbie for this dog shit take. This one says, Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. Thank you for exposing the illegitimacy of the libertarian perspective yet again. Um, corporations value profits over public safety, even for the children. Hmm. Do you suppose this applies to say vaccine manufacturers. Uh, I thought it was Sunday mo or Saturday morning and this was Robbie the clown show. Um, Robbie, I don't think kids should be forced into coal mines, just coerced into them. Has Robbie ever worked a real job in his entire life? I'd love to watch him try to stock shelves at a grocery store or wash dishes for a restaurant. Um, I'd love to see Robbie send his own kid to work in a meat packing factory. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't exactly. do it. That's the whole point of all of this, right? Is that he wouldn't do that, right? And um, uh, that, that's where that's where the libertarian philosophy, the libertarian ethos, really does fall apart, right? Because it it is the I mean, it is the infatuation of the individual to the highest order, right? Like, I mean, and Robbie never ceases to amaze me. I, I thought for uh, I you know I'll call I'll call myself out. I got I assume that is uh you know big government except when it comes to or small government except when it comes to the police would also uh in turn. Uh, be small government except when it comes to trans children but you're right right over there he slipped and he doesn't give a fuck about that so that's good for him um, but the other problem with that everything else becomes a problem right where it's like you don't want to take care of anybody who is not you and that's probably because you've never experienced what it would be like if you actually rely it needed to rely on the social welfare of everyone else right if you've never if you'd ever been put in that position Typically, there are two responses. You either come from poverty and you get ridiculously wealthy by sheer chance or whatever, and you get convinced that it's it's all because of your greatness and your glory and you, you become like Ayn Rand or something, or you're just a twat that grew up privileged and never had to take out student loans and never had to work a fucking side hustle and never, you know, busted their ass for gas money so that they could go out and do fun shit during high school, right? Um, 
you know, and then you're just like, yeah, well, fuck everybody else besides me. My life is fine. I'm not taking care of anybody else. I don't have a compassion for my community, right? Uh, oh, the private sector will just take care of everybody that's affluent, and I don't care about anybody without money is essentially what it all boils down to. And and I think that say what you will about Rising's audience being a little bit more right wing, which I think is fair. Uh, they also seemingly are more working class, which I think is revealed here. Uh, the fact that, hey, bro, what the fuck? Like actual workplace regulation is important. Like, and, you know, that's not necessarily like a right or left. Posi I mean, it is because the right wing wants to erode all of your workplace protections. Uh, but I just mean, if you're talking about regular people, um, not politicians, uh, that's a pretty like across the board safe zone is to be like, hey, should everybody be compensated fairly? Should we not be putting our kids in harm's way? Should we not be making letting corporations uh owned by the richest men in the world exploit our fucking children for profit like yeah i think we should all fucking be okay with that and on board with that because at the end of the day everybody's always talking about how in america you can make yourself whatever you want to be these kids haven't had the opportunity to make themselves anything yet okay right. and the reason you don't see this shit in europe is because those kids get to go to college for free and those kids get to have a real future and then they get to decide what they want to do with their life and if they want to have a working class life and become a waiter uh that's their fucking business guess what they can still live and they can still go to the doctor and they can still take like a fucking month of vacation a year how come they can figure that shit out and we can't because they have a little bit more of a collective mentality than us